guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are on the new update. Once again, we are here on a new update. We're going to be taking a look at all of the new items for the Reaper and the Ranger. Let me switch to the Ranger real quick. Let me. Okay, we're going to be taking a look at all the new items for the Reaper and the Ranger, along with all of the new neutral items inside of the game. Everything you can expect and how it changes pretty much how it changes both of the classes, honestly. Um, this is gonna be my first time looking at it too, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I do want to check a, take a look at. Let's take a look at the ranger first. Actually, you know what I mean. Let's take a, just just a slight little look at the ranger because she got a lot of new pets, as you can see. Uh, there's a squirrel in there, a little rat looking thing. Um, but yeah, so all these look freaking awesome, by the way. Okay, okay. So the first items up for the ranger is the short bow, which seems like. Cause you also got okay interesting you, you got the short bow which is interesting huh okay but yeah the short bow seems to be just like a regular two to three damage 1.7 second cooldown versus the three second cooldown of the big boy bows so it's almost it's pretty much almost as half as fast but the dps is a lot lower six to nine dps six to nine six to nine uh, this one's a two to three. So the DPS is 1.5 seconds. And you're looking at a 2.5 a sec. So it, it pretty much cuts right, right down in the middle. Pretty much cut right down, but it's a lot smaller, right? Instead of it taking up this many slots, it only takes up two slots. So it'd be a lot easier to fit two of these inside of your backpack um, with both of them only taking up, what, 0.4 stamina usage? These are 0.5 though, which is pretty interesting. So the damage got cut in half. The cooldowns got cut in half, but the stamina usage didn't. Well, no, the stamina usage did get cut in half. It's a 0.7. Okay, I'm tripping. So it went from 1.5 to a 0.7, but it's still a 0.4 every second. This is a 0.5 every second. That's what I was looking at. Pretty interesting though. Short bow, huh? Okay, seems pretty default. You probably be able to buy it at the beginning of the game, just like your regular wooden sword or whatnot. I want. Do you start with the short bow now? No, you start. Okay, so you still start with the wooden sword, right? Instead of starting with a short bow. I feel like it would. I don't know. I feel like changing it to a short bow would be kind of interesting. Changing the starting item to a short bow. I don't know. I feel like it'd be kind of interesting. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't think there was any new changes in a new update. It was pretty much everything is still the same as far as stats go. It's just different items. Uh, but yeah. So yeah. Um, this is pretty interesting. So I'm going to actually take a look at this big bowl of treats first. Every four seconds. You gain two random buffs and make star food item sugar 5% faster. <sighs> wait, 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 wait. Okay. It says up to 100%. So you make star food trigger 5% faster. Is that every single star? Gain two random buffs. Oh, okay. So every four or every that's gonna be a lot of seconds every four seconds the food triggers five percent faster up to 100 percent faster and every four seconds you gain the two random buffs okay that's gonna be pretty difficult to get that up to 100 percent that's gonna have to activate 20 times okay that's gonna be 80 seconds i don't know a battle that's gonna be lasting 80 seconds that's pretty interesting though and then the friends of the forest can appear in the shops um, and all your pets have a 30% chance to activate twice. So all your pets is the rat, squirrel, and looks like the hedgehog. Um, yeah, common, rare, and epic. Pretty cool. Okay. Well, all the pets, though. This counts as a pet. It's technically. Whoa. That, that changes Goobert's. That actually changes Goobert's. A 30% chance to activate twice. Not only these pets, but Gooberts have a 30% chance of activating twice. Um, the um, Ruby Whelp has a 30% chance of activating twice. The bird is also a pet. 30% chance of activating twice. That's pretty interesting. How the items that are pet items that you wouldn't ne necessarily think are pet items are actually pet items. You know what I mean? We could take a look at all the pet items after this as well. Because I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued in that. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, the rat every, oh, poison, 30 seconds deal five damage, 50% chance to inflict one poison, 15% chance to inflict one blind. Huh, okay. I do like the fact that it has that chance of inflicting poison and the 30% chance to activate twice is pretty interesting. And the fact that it doesn't use stamina. So it's not like a regular weapon. 
even though it deals damage, it pretty much have a three second cooldown of dealing five damage and a 50% chance of inflicting that poison. I would love to see this be combined with the pig, I think. Just, just because it has two different percentages, just to be able to increase both of those percentages, I think would be great. I feel like you would get a lot of bang out of your buck using the pig for this guy, personally. Uh, but yeah, interesting. I do like that though. Huh. I do like that. Very interesting. The squirrel steals a random buff. Okay. Triggers 20% faster for each pet. Does this trigger faster for each pet? It does. Triggers 20% faster for each pet. Whoa. So you can get this down to what? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12? So it'd be 120% faster, first off. Second off, it can have a 30% chance to attack twice. Can you imagine just having a bunch of rats? Can you just imagine that? And all of the rats are attacking every 1.5 seconds to deal five damage. And then also dealing that, uh, that blindness plus the poison. Ah, uh, that's, that, I don't know. That could be, that could be a build low key. And they're so small. You can fit so many of these just on the screen. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so the squirrel just throws a random buff. That doesn't seem very crazy to me unless you just have a bunch of these you would literally have to have a bunch of these to just steal a bunch of buffs but they don't do damage so you're filling your screen with these plus this but at the same time they don't do damage so where's your damage gonna compound you know what i mean huh very interesting very interesting um and then we also have the hedgehog which deals 10 damage oh whoa 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 deal 10 damage and is increased by 0.5 per poison. Health drops below 70%, gain one pierce and 10 block once. Huh. So it just deals that 10 damage every five seconds. And then you know the, oh, it's only got three slots in the front of it though. So it can only trigger uh, two for six, 60% uh, faster. Interesting. I could see the hedgehog combined with a thorn whip. that could be a build hedgehog plus thorn whip plus poison ivy well actually no because the only way to get these pets is from here so you literally can't rock this with poison ivy because this is also a class item so you only be able to rock hedgehog plus this and probably i could see a belladonna's whisper potential well no because no poison so you have to probably rock tuscan piercer so it would be um i have a bunch of hedgehogs plus thorn whip Combined with Tuscan Piercer, more than likely. Into like a thorny build. But the, the moment you run into a ripshaw blade, you're fucked. But still, pretty cool. That could be a cool build though. I like that. Interesting. Um, I did go over this. Uh, oh, wow. Tusk Poker. 50% chance to gain one spike. Huh. So instead of using it, you're gaining it every 1.7 seconds, which is interesting. Huh. They don't do that much damage, but their side effects is interesting. What about this one? Belladon's 50% chance to inflict one poison. And then this one is 50% chance to gain one clover. Wow. I like the mini ones. They're like little baby bows. And I'm assuming you make them pretty much in the same way you do short bow, right? So it's short bow probably with a uh, um, walrus tusk for the Tuscan poker. Um, probably a clover for the Fortunus hope. And then probably, I don't know about this one though. I wonder if it's just going to be one um, poison um, potion to get the uh, Belladonna shade. Hmm very interesting these are some interesting weapons and i love it okay very i love they're so cute they're so cute i can see builds with this i can see builds with this and i love it i could definitely see some builds with this all right fuck it with it very interesting and then we also got this class item which shop entered generate two lucky clovers so you get two of these whenever you enter the shop that's pretty that's a I don't, you can sell these for two so you're ba basically gaining two gold Every time you uh, enter the shop, pretty much, right? And then your sale chance is a plus 8%. So 
So you got a plus 8% to see a sell item? Chance to find unique items plus 20%? Okay. Okay, okay. 20 Clovers of Reach. You gain 40 random buffs. Wow. 40? That You know how many buffs is 40? That's a lot of buffs. That could... That's a lot of buffs. I would definitely probably rock like... Maybe Fortuna's Hope, because definitely you're not gonna just put 20 clovers on your on your board, right? So I'd rock Fortuna's Hope in order to get that 50% chance to gain the clovers in the first place. Mega Clover, maybe even Fortuna's Grace. Because since you're gonna have that many clovers, you might as well have the crit for Fortuna's Grace, anyways. You know what I mean? But you really don't have a DPS scaling though. That's your only problem here. There's no DPS scaling, so you have to rely on like your base weapons or the uh, the default neutral weapons for default DPS scaling. It seems, but still, that's that's interesting, especially with the sell chance. Any unique items, you know what I mean? Speaking of unique items, unique shop items. Oh, so those are like the oh wow, twenty percent is high, huh? You could you could do some interesting stuff with the Mega Clover. Interesting. I like that though. I like that. So yeah, those are all the new items when it comes to the Ranger. You got three new or four new bows, um, three new pets, two new class items. I'm really interested in seeing the Hedgehog build and the Rat build. I don't really care about the Squirrel too much though. I mean, it's still a random buff. It's just one buff every four seconds like that doesn't seem too crazy to me honestly that doesn't seem very crazy at all um but yeah I, i'd love to see the battle on the shade and all of the new bow and arrows pretty freaking awesome especially that 50 percent chance to gain the um to gain the, the the pierce combine that with thorn whip along with hedgehog by itself could probably be nice plus poison ivy though Cause you could you could definitely do, like you could rock like three of these and be still be straight on on stamina, fifty percent chance to gain, boom, and then just rock like a Tuscan Piercer or something in that guy. You know what I mean? That would that that could be dope. That could be dope. That that could honestly be dope. I could definitely see that, hundred percent. Wow. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's check out the Reaper now. Um, so it looks like we got some potions, a card, and a few class items here. I'm gonna start on this side, actually. So we got the Cauldron, which every five seconds heal for 10, or gain three mana, or gain two heat. Okay. Oh, wow. So it just upgrades potions for you, essentially. That's the big thing. So shop entered, upgrade an adjacent potion into like a big boy potion so this would definitely be hand in hand with a potion build i wouldn't even care about upgrading potions at that point just freaking stack on a bunch of potions and then just get this guy interesting and then it triggers 15 percent faster yeah the heal the gaining of mana and the the two heat is nice and all but the big thing definitely the potions definitely 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 the potions oh we got mrs struggle now which is not a class item it's a legendary. Huh. Okay. Remove one buff from each type from your opponent. Wow. So it removes one buff of each type. So it, it practically removes five buffs, but for each type at the same time, every five seconds. Huh. That's different. Okay. That's interesting though. That's interesting. Different, but interesting. I like that. Very, very, very interesting. Mrs. Struggles, you are. <laughs> um, and then we got a snake. 5% chance for each clover to protect poison on your opponent from being cleansed. Start of the battle, gain four clovers and 30 maximum health for each pet, each star pet. You can have up to four star pets. Every two seconds, inflict two poison. That seems strong. I think this is a class item. Because it says unique. No wonder it's strong. 
So every two seconds. Two seconds. Combine that with the the death scythe. Every two seconds and fill it four poison. You get two of these. This is like. This is like almost a poison goober. I think this is better than a poison goober. Because it's every two seconds. Unless you can activate the poison goober every two seconds. This is probably better. And then you're gaining four clovers, which is what? 5, 10, 15, 20% chance to protect your uh, things from being cleansed. And then just have two of these. You know what I mean? I think that's the only way to gain clovers too. So you would just have two of these. I'd have two of these. You'd probably be able to fit. No, it's a class item though. So you can only have one. Okay, never mind. Never mind, never mind, false alarm. So you have to stack on those pets then. Uh, yeah, you have to stack on those pets. Which, this class really doesn't have any pets other than the ruby chunk. So it would probably just be the dragons. Um, stack on the dragons more than likely. And then the birds and stuff. To, uh, you know, okay. Interesting. So. So for each star pet. So it would be 4, 8, 12, 16. Which is what? 80% chance. So the max you could do is an 80% chance to protect your poison from being cleansed. Like all the time. Like a hundred percent like 80% chance to not get cleansed on your poison is kind of crazy. And the fact that it inflicts poison by itself is even better. Whoa, this This just made Poison Bomb so much stronger. It was already strong, but now it's so much stronger. I could, I would love to see this be in a build. Love to see that in a build. Interesting. Okay. Next one is Miss Fortune. Wow, we got Mr. Struggles, Mrs. Struggles, and now we got Miss Fortune. <laughs> Uses one clover to gain two buffs of the type of which you have the most. Oh, wow. I thought I was going to say the one you have the least of, but you're just going to keep gaining them. But what if, wait a second. What if the one you have the most of is clovers already? So aren't you just going to gain infinite clovers? If you start off with, if you get this and you already have four clovers and then you just combine that with that, it'll use one and give you five. So each two seconds, every three seconds, you're just going to keep on gaining clover and clover and clover. Which essentially means this is just going to keep getting stronger and protecting your cleanses or protecting your poison. From being cleansed, you know? Huh. That is interesting. Okay. Maybe you don't want, I don't know, that, that that's that's interesting. Okay, okay. Very interesting. Um, I guess we got Ice Dragon as well, which on hit, this might be a mistake, potentially, but on hit inflicts one cold and opponent reaches 20 cold, gain 50 block. The reason I say it's, it might be a mistake because on it, it says it's, um, it's only for the Reaper, right? But if I go to, to the Pyromancer, it's also there. You know what I mean? Because usually the way of, I would think of getting this, since the way of getting the Ruby Chunk is getting the Fire Lizard card, combine that with the Ruby Whelp, you get the Ruby Chunk. So I'm assuming, you know, the Ruby Whelp plus the Blue Dragon would give you the Ice Dragon. But considering it's also in the Pyromancer, and the Pyromancer doesn't have the deck of cards in order to get the Blue Dragon card. Not sure, but at the same time, in order to get this, I'm assuming you would use the Frozen Flame. So it might also have a second way of being, um, being, uh, being, a ch um, being God or whatever English being getting whatever might be through that combination anyway. So it might have two different ways of, of, of getting this item. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Pretty interesting though, but I'm not sure why you would want to use the ice dragon on the Reaper. Cause it doesn't benefit from cold at all. Like nothing, none of these items benefit from cold, right? It's usually just a poison debuff. You feel me? So, you know, huh? Not sure why you would want to get this. Honestly, <laughs> to be honest, I, I think I'd rather go Ruby chunk if anything, but I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. though, so, cause you got the Ruby chunk, which is fire heat. 
Then he also got the Ice Dragon, which is Ice. So I, I guess it makes sense to have both of them here, you know. Still pretty cool though. But yeah, so you got the Ice Dragon. Uh, new potion, which is the Strong Divine Potion, which we, we'll go over to the Divine Potion since that's in the neutral list. But the Strong Divine Potion is if you have at least 20 debuffs, it means you having debuffs, you will consume it and cleanse 12 debuffs and gain four random buffs. But if you don't have debuffs, then what do you do? You know what I mean? Like in 20 is a, is a decent number of debuffs. I guess if you're going against another poison build, this can be really nice to have. Um, but if that poison build has the snake and it has that protection of being uh, removed, I guess it, it doesn't really matter. You're just gaining four buffs at that point. Pretty interesting, though. That's, sorry, that's an interesting one. I kind of like it, though. It gives another combat against poison builds if they don't have the snake. You know, what I, mean? I feel like every poison build is probably going to rock the snake now versus any other class item, because usually you would just rock the cursed dagger to have the accuracy and the crit chance, you know, because of the debuffs. Um, but now I feel like the snake is just a better option just for the protection, honestly. Um, but yeah, and then you also got the strong vampiric potion, which if both characters drop below 80 percent health, you're going to consume that you're going to gain one vamp in 10 percent life still for five seconds huh so that means all of your weapons are going to life still for five seconds i feel like this could be kind of strong if you combine it with staff of unhealing and uh nocturnal lifter because Usually you would rock this with the mana thirst and your mana thirst would be the weapon that is stealing the 20% life, right? Um, and then you would just combine this, get the vampirism, which makes your uh, mana thirst stronger. And then on top of that, it has another 10% life still. Pretty crazy, right? And you just stack up all of these potions, literally just a bunch of them. I don't know how you would make this though. Please don't tell me it's a blood amulet. There's no way. Because a blood amulet is, is way too expensive to upgrade a potion. I guess realistically you would want to use the cauldron, but then that also means you're not going to get the nocturnal lock lifter. Interesting. I don't know. That's an interesting one. That gets your brain thinking. Definitely gets your brain thinking, huh? And the last one we have is the uh, the reverse card, which on a reveal reflects three debuffs. Okay, if there are no duplicate cards before, steal two buffs. Huh. Huh, okay. It's pretty decent, pretty decent, you know? Pretty decent card. A little interesting. I don't know how I feel about that one. Don't know how I feel about that one. Pretty interesting, though. Pretty interesting. Huh. But yeah, I guess my... My... Mm, my favorite item, I think, is the snake. Honestly, I think the snake is freaking amazing when it comes to poison builds. Definitely, definitely amazing. That combined with misfortune can be pretty interesting. But I feel like at a certain threshold, as long as you're at that 100% chance, you might not even need to use misfortune. But it'll be probably pretty hard to use misfortune along with the snake because you're going to keep gaining the clovers. As long as you're not going against a bird, because a bird would probably have your direct like effect against you because the bird is going to remove the clovers, which means your poison is going to be protected anymore. You know what I mean? So everyone needs a bird. OK, everyone needs a bird. Every single build needs a bird now just to remove clovers, because if you're going against a poison build without that bird removing the clovers, the poison isn't getting removed from you. But then again, you also need something to remove the poison along with the bird. It's, it's just a lot. Um, very interesting, though. But I do like the snake. I think the snake is probably my favorite out of this list. Usually it would be the ice dragon, low key. But since I already covered the ice dragon and the pyromancer, I'd probably say it's the snake now. Um, and let's see. Let me look at these class items. So, yeah. So the new class items is the cauldron and the snake. Cauldron is pretty interesting just for the upgrading of potions. But I don't think I don't know. I feel like at a certain threshold, you're going to have enough potions. You know, you. 
at a certain point, you're not going to be upgrading them anymore because they're already they're they're all going to be upgraded, right? Right? Unless you use it as a way to sell it, selling them, you could sell the potions, I guess, if you really wanted to. After upgrading them and just buying more for money, I don't know. Not sure, but but either way, still pretty freaking interesting. So pretty interesting. But yeah, and now we're going to take a look at the new neutral weapons or neutral items, which are not that many, but still, I do want to take a look at them. The first one being the moon armor, which everyone loves, knows I love mana. Okay, I love mana builds. Okay, no in ands or buts about it. I love mana builds. So this peeped my interest hard. I'm assuming it's going to be a mana orb plus the holy armor, right? So at the start of the battle, you're going to gain 40 armor plus 20 armor for each magic item on the star slots. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's 10, 10 star slots. You can gain 200 additional armor. Okay. And then every three seconds, you're gaining two uh, poison or two mana um, and then reflecting two BD buffs. Okay. That's pretty interesting. I could definitely see that in somewhat of a combination with the moon shield for sure but you would have to have it with a mag oh this does count as a magic item okay so that you're gonna gain even more armor and with the armor you're gaining you're gonna be gaining even more mana i could see you rocking this this is a magic item too hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up the mana thirst is a magic item imagine rocking that's like the perfect mana thirst build literally the perfect mana thirst build literally no ends ands or buts about it because all you need is to gain a shit ton of mana and then boom life seal and killing them like combine that with the moon sh like that's insane that might need a new combination instead of rocking vamp armor but that that's probably that's a lot of mana orbs though you're gonna have to get super lucky in getting all those mana orbs because th that by default, that's three mana orbs or one, two, three. That's three mana orbs already. And if you want to get like stacking even more, that's going to be even more mana orbs. But then again, at the same time, like. I don't know. I don't know which one would be better. Vampiric armor is easier to get because it doesn't use a mana orb. And you can you just use leather armor plus the uh, blood amulet. Boom. Vampiric armor, infinite armor, feed that into the moon shield. But it, it's only 10. 20 sorry it's 20 armor okay huh it'd be different if this also gave like infinite armor but it does give a lot for each magic item at the very start of the game you might be able to insta kill them depending on the build very interesting though but yeah that's the moon shield uh next item that we have seems to be this stone armor wait what stamina usage increased by 20 percent Why would you want this? It increases your stamina usage. Okay. Sorry to battle, you're gaining 80 armor. And on attack, it's got to be a melee attack. 30% chance to remove one pierce from your opponent. Okay. Health drops below 50%. Gain armor equal to 30% of your missing health. Huh. I don't know how I feel about this. It's giving you a lot of armor. It's giving you more armor than this is giving you. Because you start with 80. And then you also gain armor. 50% of your health drops low. You gain 30% of your missing health once. But you can have more than one of these. So you can get even more. And especially if you have an item that increases your max health, like Tim or the blood ambulance. Uh, there's probably a f like, I think there's like two other items that increase your maximum health. But yeah, huh. And I guess the longer the game goes on or the more rounds you go, because you gain more health each round, right? So this just keeps getting stronger each and every single round that you go. Because you're going to be gaining even more armor. Interesting. 
Interesting. I don't think that 30% chance really matters that much. Because if you're going against an opponent that doesn't have um, spikes, then it doesn't matter. So then you're just gaining armor, like a lot of it too. Start a battle 80, you know? Hmm. Very interesting. I don't know if I like that stamina usage is increased by 20%. You'd have to use a weapon that doesn't use a lot of stamina. And the only one I could think of like that is probably just mana thirst. But then again, you can combine stone armor plus the moon shield, turn all of that armor you gain into mana and utilize that with mana thirst. You know what I mean? Plus, when you drop below 50% health, boom, there's more armor. Use the mana thirst again. Very interesting. And you can combine at the orb. And hopefully you get empowerment with the orb. Use that with the mana thirst as well, or even vampirism. Very, very, very interesting. Plus with the class item of the uh, the ranger. Uh, the, um, the leaf for healing, more healing. Eh, very, very, very interesting. I don't know how I, that's, that's how I would think of using it initially. Very interesting though. Very interesting. Um, and then we also have the divine potion, which we already covered the strong one, but this one, uh, it just cleanses buffs, it, it debuffs. It doesn't give you the four buff. So that's what that does. Um, we got the gloves of power. Urgh. Huh. The weapon dealing 20% damage is pretty nasty, but attacks 10% slower. Interesting. And when the weapon hit, you gain two armor. Huh. I just think about using this with Moonshield. Because each time both of those weapons hit, you're gaining armor. And you can combine that with the Moonshield to give you even more armor. So you'll be gaining four armor each time the weapon hits, along with the, uh, the 12 armor gained. You're getting that that monogen. Combine that with the mana thirst or something like that. Very interesting. The 20% damage and then the attacking of slower is interesting too. But I think that 10% damage increase is worth it. Or 20% damage increase might be worth. To be honest. Because that increases. The more damage that your weapon do, does by default. Will increase. Like... It will scale along with it. Right? So 20% more for this mana thirst will be one. Because 20% of five is one. Right? So you would be gaining one damage here. But if this mana thirst did 50 damage, you would be gaining 10 damage. Right? So it scales as long as your weapon is scaling, this scales better. Or it, it helps your weapon scale better, basically. It's interesting, especially if you stack these. Can you just imagine like stacking this or even putting it on the great sword it practically increases the damage by what eight to ten because the great sword is already slow by default making it ten percent slower is going to hurt anything you know especially if you get that um the cooldown situation mm. and you just imagine having like five of these on the side <laughs> Very interesting. My brain is cooking. I'm thinking I'm thinking of things. Thinking of things. Very interesting. So yeah, that's a new item. And then we also got the vampiric potion, which uh just consume this, gain one vampirism, and still uh five life. Essentially. Huh. Very interesting. But yeah, those are all of the new class items um with the Reaper and the Ranger, along with the new neutral items for everything pretty much very interesting it's got some new very new items metas are definitely going to be changing 100 percent metas are definitely going to be changing i like it though honestly i definitely do like it the armors is cool the moon armor stone armor 
the new uh, gloves of power is interesting. I love how the art style is just like the stone helmet, plus the, uh, the stone armor. <laughs> All we're missing now is uh, stone boots. <laughs> Instead of leather boots, gives us stone boots or something. But yeah, very interesting. Very, very interesting. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, tell me what your thoughts are on all of the new items so far. How do you like them? What do you like about them? What do you hate about them? You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I will see you guys on the next one.